Hello there. Can't see who this email's from, but we might get to that at the end. It's quite long. So, whomever this is writes, thank you so much for your YouTube video. Um, I have a anorexia for about six years. I have typical temperament predisposition of this illness. I'm sensitive, a people pleaser, low self-esteem, perfectionistic, high achiever. I tend to disagree that there's a typical personality that gets an eating disorder, but let's not go into that. Anyway, in 2014, when I started recovery initially, I had made significant recovery process mentally and physically, reaching a minimal healthy weight. But from mid-2015, I had a relapse. I continued to work with psychotherapists, dietitians, day patient programs, mindfulness, meditation, yoga. My therapist is amazing and I have, um, and I continue to make progress mentally, etc. I work every day in these areas. I have educated myself so much. However, I'm stuck physically. I see this dietitian, but I struggle to keep consistency with the meal plan guidelines. I'm giving him to recovery. I'm motivated to recover and I will not give up and I know it will happen. But I was listening your, to your podcast, To Weigh or Not To Weigh, the other day, between an accumulation of other work, things I've watched, etc. And when you talked about it in recovery, you wanted to recover and put on weight, but it wasn't happening. I feel exactly at that point, just this last little thing to click in. I don't like being tired and achy and anxious, and I think that the hunger that I've suppressed for so long is becoming more prominent, probably because I don't want it anymore, or my tired body can't deal with it anymore. But when I put on weight, I still get scared, wobbly, and then maintain or lose a bit again. I want to be like you were to see weight gain as a trophy, but how do I get over the block to that point? How do I commit to weight gain when I'm not, when I'm so scared? I hope I've explained my situation sufficiently and that this makes sense. I would love a YouTube video or podcast to give them the specifics of this. I think it may help others who are in my position too. Thank you so much. Um, thank you. I understand mental hunger and spend many hours walking to the shop, supermarket, looking at things I can't and don't eat. But is it mental hunger when you're looking at a nine calorie jelly for about 10 minutes and examining calories on kids food? God, this is so embarrassing writing this, but not buying them. Thanks again. And that was from AR. Well, two questions there. First of all, yes, it is absolutely mental hunger if you're examining calories on the back of anything. Think about it. Why would you do that? Why, like, why is food so interesting? Food is so interesting because your brain is hungry and yet you're still scared of weight gain. And so... If you are anything to do with food, thinking about food, thinking about calories, thinking about nutrition information, bloody blood blood, thinking about movement so that you can eat food, all of that stuff, it's all mental hunger. You're hungry. So the main question there was, how do you commit to weight gain whilst you're still really scared of weight gain? And you're right, you do absolutely have to commit to weight gain. Um, and you're also right, of course you're going to be scared of weight gain. I think just a couple of days ago, I did a, um, I think I did a video on like rewiring negative body image and where the fear of weight gain and where that belief system, that gaining weight is a bad thing, all sort of where it all adds up and comes from. Um, so I'm not gonna completely go into that again just yet because I think I just did a video on that. But what I'm gonna say is that, let's just take that question of how does, how do you follow through on your commitment to weight gain despite the fact that you're scared of weight gain? Because both of those things can exist at the same time. You can absolutely want to recover and be motivated to recover and be sick to death of being sick. And you can also be terrified of weight gain. Both of those two things can exist alongside each other. For most people or a lot of people that I talk to, it's really not a motivation problem that they have it's a fear problem that they have. So their motivation is 10 out of 10, but their fear is also 10 out of 10. And so what happens is nothing. If your motivation to change is 10 out of 10, yet your fear of changing is 10 out of 10, no change usually happens. So what we have to do when we're in recovery is we have to understand that that fear is just, it's gonna stay there. It's not going anywhere. It's not going anywhere for a while. And it will slowly dissipate as you start to rewire that fear. So that is as you, st as you start to act as if you are not afraid of weight gain. Then gradually, over the weeks, over the months, your brain will start to think like you're not afraid of weight gain. Because the actions come first, because the action informs your brain. And so the problem that we have, or the solution that we have actually, is that we have to act as if we are not afraid of weight gain, even though we are afraid of weight gain. And I know that sounds like a really stupid bloody thing to say 
but it's absolutely possible. And it's usually really important. You have to do it. Think about all the other things that you do in your life, all the times in your life where you've had a strong feeling. It might be nerves, it might be fear, it might be whatever, yet you've acted as if you didn't feel that way. You're very capable of doing that. And anybody that's ever ridden a horse, especially if you competed or done cross country or anything like that, that's, that's actually what really helped me understand that I could do that because there was always certain drums. Like take a trochaner, for example, which is a trochaner is a log. It's like an elevated log. So you've got this log that's, that's off the ground and quite high. And then underneath this log is this huge ditch. And trochaners scare riders more than they scare horses. A lot of the time, a lot of the horses don't even notice the ditch. I used to always be scared of that type of jump. But the problem was, as my, as my riding instructor used to tell me, if my horse knows I'm scared, then my horse is going to be like, oh God, there's something scary to be scared of, so I better be scared as well. It's not going to want to jump the fence. And so I could feel shit scared of jumping that fence, and I would act as if I didn't. And so that actually, horse riding really helped me understand that I was actually quite good at that. I was actually quite good at being scared of something and then acting as if I wasn't scared of it. So... Even if you don't ride horses, which most people don't, but if you don't ride horses, I'm sure that there is something that you can draw out of your life, something that you have done in the past that's going to help you understand that you are absolutely capable of being afraid of something and acting as if you are not. You are capable of being afraid of eating more food and still eating more food. You are capable of being afraid of weight gain and acting as if you are not afraid of weight gain. You're capable of all those things and it's exactly what you need to do. It is the solution here. The fear is not going anywhere. It's gonna be there for a while. Just think of it as your friend. Oh, like, there's the fear again. It's there with me every day. I don't have to go into it. I don't have to be part of it. It can just sit there next to me on the couch while I'm eating chocolate. So that's really how you have to use that fear. Just get used to it. Don't run away from it. Don't let it affect you. It's just gonna stay there until you're fully recovered, probably. It's gonna get better and better, or at least it's gonna get less and less. It's going to be there for a while. Get used to it being there and act as if it isn't there. I hope that helps, AR. Um, let us know how you're doing. Bye.